So today, um, so there's an error we're going to be looking at this. And so uh, my name is Benny, I'm a data analyst at ARM I'm also a technical writer as well. Um, so um, AI Builder is a feature in Power Automate or in Power Platform Generic, actually, that allows you to use AI, AI models to create and use them to improve your business processes generally in any of the components of the Microsoft Power Platform. So um, today we're focusing just on generative AI. Uh, generative AI is a type of the AI technology that allows you to produce content. This could be text, this could be images, and this could also be audio as well. So we'll be focusing on three different um, business use cases today. We're first of focusing on, um, so when we move to the what the AI model could do, it actually could do a lot more than just generative AI. You could use the process documents, use the process images, you could use the process text. But we're going to focus on just the generative AI capability of this particular builder. And what it can help you do, you can summarize text. You can use the draft replies, which I was looking to today, because it's to mm -hmm. classify and extract. And it also builds your models using custom prompt as well. OK, so the data that we're going to use today is going to be uh, a review from some UK stores in um, some of the feedbacks from customers in the Amazon from the UK store. So, so So once I get the data, I kept it in um, an Excel file. So that who does is an Excel sheet for now. So this are the data looks like. Uh, we have um, the URL of the products, the product's name, the review, the titles, the feedbacks actually from the customers, and as well as the ratings and what dates they drop the feedback, as well as if anybody found it helpful, and some other important information as well. So um, the AI Builder, you can find it in the AI Hub, which is here. So once you go to the AI Hub, you are going to be looking at those generative AI parts. And and that's because we look at the prompts. So the prompt allows you to create prompts which you could use in your flows in Microsoft or um, Ultimate. So we're going to start with the first prompt, which is going to be for the summaries. So one thing we want is whenever a customer gives us um, feedbacks, we can um, summarize this um, feedback and also focus on exactly what was the issue with um, the customers. So this is going to be the very first uh, flow we're going to build. So it's already built because of the time limits of the presentation. Okay, so we are going to work with a manually triggered flow. So once the flow is triggered, or uh, it this part of the flow is going to get the different um, it's going to get the rows in this particular right. So I've shortened all the feedback to only show us the first four hundred, yeah, first four hundred um, rows of the data as well. And once it lists all the rows in the data, um, the next one going to do is to create an HTML um, table. So that's all we guess the data in the way that is very readable. So we create the um, HTML data. Then this way I add my prompt. So the prompt I'm using is the summarize prompt, which is this prompt that um that was written. And so the good thing about this prompt is it's really very easy to use. So all you have to do is like create a prompt here with using ChatGPT prompt. And you write in your prompt message following um, the rules. So you have very um, specific are your prompt and then you put in your input. So by input, they mean the parameters that that makes the parameter that, that the, the prompt is going to be looking in. So, so for example, um this um summarized model is looking at the feedbacks. So I do it to analyze the feedback which is in this estimate um, table and summarize this feedback and focus on those the contents of your feedback without using um external data so that it doesn't isolate. So once it does that, uh, it summarizes it the prompt and it gives us a prompt. So that's a very first example. So what I have to do is I will just uh, save this and I run the test. So um, once you have the, once you do use the AI builder prompt in um, Ultimate, it always comes up with this on warning, and it's just 
so that because again we know that um yes an ai it could give you false information or incorrect information technically so this one just acting for a form of approval system so that maybe you can either approve or reject it once you see the feedback and maybe you run your your this thing it's more like a checkup so you can test or we do a minor test and we test our runs Survive so and run the flow. So I just have to wait for the city of Southport. Okay, Let me also open this up on business case as we are waiting for the load to run. Okay, so it's done. Okay, so this is it. So um, based on the prompt I was giving, uh, it analyzes different tests and it has actually um, given us um, feedback. So it summarizes each of them, the positive from the negative of what each of this uh, the customer says. So, for example, this one about the sneaker, she mentioned like it was a unique driver. She had to uphold like, the reliability issues with the plastic materials. And just like that, it gets you. So you could, if it is like a feedback form you have on your platform, you could actually make it a way that it gets that same message or it gets sent as an email to the customer service or department as well. So the second um, use case we're going to look at is we're looking at the use case where we can't see. Us with this using the sentiment. So we want to have a use case in which we can um we can see the sentiment of our different feedbacks. So when we get this, sorry. So this, so this second UK is going to analyze the positive and negative sentiments in our data. So we're going to get whether the feedback was generally was it positive feedback or was it a negative feedback. So this is a way for you to classify your feedback based on those that complements and those that are complaints of the customers. And you can now move all your complaints to a Jira board or to a Microsoft plan for your team to take a look at these all different feedbacks. So um, what this does is because it's an apply stage because we want it to analyze um, all the gen all the each of the each of the feedbacks as well. So going to use an apply to each, we get um, the value of this of this our table, and then we add the we're going to use um, the analyze positive or negative feedback. I'm going to make it English. Then give it the review test, which is the column that owns uh, the feedback, and then we add the Add to row to the table. So this is going to add a row to the table and it's going to create a new table with all the details of that customer. And then we also get um, the sentiment as well. So once we do that, and uh, like I said, where we run it here, this is currently still running. But once we run it, we're going to have our data on a different sheet, which is the sheet. And what we now see is uh, we get the customer, the product name, the reviewer, the title, the text, the review date, and have the individual sentiment of each of these different feedbacks. So once we have this, we can also then again just take a look at just the negative feedbacks and take that as take that up with the respective department that should handle these all feedbacks. And the final and the final demo we're going to look at is we're going to take a look at using it for to get some customers that send you feedback by mail. So this flow, what it basically does is uh, whenever you receive it, a new email on your inbox. So for example, I get this. And once you get this, once you get this uh, inbox, so once you get this inbox, uh, it's going to take take the content of our inbox from the HTML to a text so that we can make use of it. If I'm going to use this positive or negative um, feedback to get, yeah, I want to just use the exact same uh, Sentiments I was used here just to get the positive and sentiment feedback. 
And once we get that, we're going to use a condition. Now I want it to filter it. So I'm using a condition that here, yeah, I'm using when the prediction is um, negative. So when it's greater than 0 0.05, that means it's a negative. And I want it that whenever it's a negative, this particular may get sent to um, the customer, maybe thanking them for, for like complimenting us on our service and assuring that that will keep doing better. And if it's a negative um, response, we can tag it up to a to a customer rep or to the product manager or product account manager to handle it. So what this prompt does is, so this is now we have a prompt for negative memory and we have a different prompt for like positive memory. So we can take a look at the prompt. So um, that's it. So this is the prompt for the positive memory. So what this prompt does is just uh, receive the emails. It takes context, mindful of the context, the context and the substance. And again, I don't to do this on um, this summer because I wanted to customize the email in a particular way. And she does go straight to the point and thank the customer for that. Then the last one we have is the negative email prompt. So this email prompt is going to, I want you to be more conscious and understanding. Also, I also assure the person that we're going to look into their complaint as well. And last letter is with, I don't want to start with this because I also want to make it again, like I mentioned to me, very, um, so in a very customized way as well. So um, once you add that, so like there is a condition here that whenever the, the probability is, is of the negative is better than it can about the damage it should send the users want to analyze the negative email and then this is where i customize the image to look in a particular way and then he sends when then he sends an email back to that back to the customer um telling them that we're listening to their feedbacks with the output of our ai model and it's also tags in for example our customer as well and then we also have one again for our um, negative for our positive or uh, what's a positive email. It also again runs through our model. It puts the sample of what it gets, which is probably to thank the customer for our service. And it sends this now back to the customer as a one of a reply. So uh, to test this prompt, we we'll need to send an email to uh, the Outlook account. Yeah, so this is the Outlook account. So I'm going to send it, which is my phone, I send it to my Africa phone. Or anybody can actually send an email to the, so this will cloud to Africa account too, so we can see what the sample of the email is going to look like. So I send an email. And I'm sending the email right now. So send the email and you can send the email very soon. So this email. So I sent an email to express my satisfaction with what I brought to that I purchased from a particular store. So what's our model supposed to do now? It's supposed to reply this email by also forwarding it, but also telling, assuring the customer that we're going to work on it. And if we go back to our flow, we should be running those. So, surround successfully.
and if I go to my email, I'll see you right now. So I'm just going to open my Gmail account. Ah, uh, this is. So what if it does now, it addresses this and then it gives me a reply for the customer. So then the customer is going to I can decide the sentiment of the customer while right? I get to help and assist. And if it is appreciated, and it also now tags it to the respective department. So in this case, I tag it back to myself. But in a real life business case, you probably tag it to the customer service before the product to, to take a look at the issue as well. So that's the three use case you can use AI to use the power